Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade, nonlinear, interesting differential equation. It's nonlinear because y and y prime are multiplied together, so that kind of generates a term like y squared or x squared or whatever. So we have y double prime equals 2 times y times y prime, and then we're going to solve for y. I call this equation interesting because of the presence of y, y prime, and y double prime, but not in an additive manner, where we have, if we had something like y equals y prime plus y double prime, that equation obviously would be totally different, right? All right, let's see how we can solve this type of equation. First of all, there's one thing that I want you to notice, that y double prime is the second derivative, which is the derivative of the first derivative. In other words, y double prime can be written as y prime prime. That's why it's called double prime, okay? Every prime means you're differentiating once. On the right-hand side, we have the y and the y double prime. I mean, y and y prime. That's a product. What does that remind you? Hmm. When we square uh, an expression and differentiate it, let's say we're differentiating x squared, this gives us 2x, right? Okay, we just bring the 2 to the front. So this 2 actually should be a clue for you. Even though the 2 wasn't there, if 2, 2 wasn't there, you could still solve it the same way. But I'm just saying the presence of 2 definitely is a, you know, kind of like a heads up. But what if this was not a y squared? How would you differentiate y squared? Think about it. Similarly, right? y is a function of x. We don't know what it is. But you would just differentiate it using the chain rule. You would bring the power to the front, reduce the power, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which we call the derivative of the base, in this case, or y, that would be y prime. Now, does that look like our expression? Absolutely. This is exactly what we have. So, now we can go ahead and write the right-hand side as the derivative of y squared. Make sense? So the right-hand side is the derivative of y squared, and the left-hand side is the derivative of the first derivative, which is the derivative of y prime. Great. This is nice. What happens if two functions are equal to each other, or their derivatives? If f prime is equal to g prime, then does that imply f equals g all the time? Or does it imply something similar? Here's the thing. If you subtract g prime from both sides, you get f prime minus g prime equals 0. The derivative of which function is 0? Think about it. Because now I can write this difference as the derivative of the difference. And now think about it. What function differentiated gives you 0? If you set a constant, you write about it. Because derivative is the rate of change of a function and constants do not change or vary, like variables. So f minus g must be a constant, which means f can be written as g plus a constant. In other words, two functions that differ by a constant when differentiated gives us the same thing. Well, I can give you lots of examples on this, but think about it this way. E to, e to the power x plus 1 and e to the power x, when you differentiate, they both give you e to the power x, and they differ by a constant, right? Cool. Now, this is very helpful information because this is basically how we are going to solve this differential equation. So let's go ahead and apply that property, calling this f and calling this g. We get y prime equals y squared plus c. Awesome. Now, from here we got a constant. And what are we going to do? Well, if we had y prime equals x squared plus c, I kind of I want to show you the alternatives so you can kind of look at it, uh, different perspectives. You this would be easy because we could just integrate and write it as x cubed over three plus c x plus another constant. You can call c sub one or k or whatever. It doesn't matter. That would be the answer, really quick, right? But in the case of y squared, things aren't that easy. We kind of need to write this as dy over dx, and then this is actually a separable differential equation. Let's go ahead and solve it that way. We're going to use some interesting ideas. That's why I wanted to include this problem, okay? Kind of came up with the idea, which is not too hard to do, by the way. You can really think about it. Like, make up problems, okay, if you know, uh, if you understand how this works. So, I want to bring the y squared plus c over here, 
and put the dx on the right hand side. And of course, our next step, once we separate the variables, will be, would be to integrate both sides. And then when you integrate dx, it's fairly easy. It's just going to be x plus c, right? Easy. What about the left hand side? But again, I already used the c, so maybe I should use a k. What, what about that? Let's just use a different constant because it doesn't have to be the same. Now, how do you differentiate, I mean integrate, 1 over y squared plus c? We're going to use a trigonometric substitution. That's why this problem is really nice, in my opinion. But again, you know, I don't want to brag about it because I kind of thought about it. But anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace y with square root of c times tangent theta. This might come as a surprise, like where, does, where on earth that, does that come from, right? So the, here's the idea. Whenever you see y squared plus a squared, always replace y with a tangent theta. If you see y squared minus a squared, then you should replace y with a times secant theta. And if you see a squared minus y squared, then you should replace a with y with a times sine theta. Okay? You get the idea? Those are trigonometric substitutions and they're very, very common. Okay, so you should know them by heart. Memorize. Okay. Now, in this case, of course, a happens to be square root of c because we have to square root it. And now from here, we need to evaluate dy. So dy is just going to be, um, thank you, notability. So dy is just going to be the derivative of this expression. dy equals the square root of c times the derivative of tangent theta, which is secant squared theta. Remember that? And of course, I need to multiply it by d theta because that's a dy. Okay, let's go ahead and replace everything with what it is. For example, dy would be square root of c secant squared theta d theta divided by y squared plus c. That will be y is root c tangent theta. I need to square that plus c. Okay, great. Let's simplify this expression. Now, our integral is in terms of theta. And from here, we get root c secant squared theta d theta. At the bottom, we get c tangent squared, which I can, by the way, factor out as c, and that'll give me tangent squared theta plus 1. But one thing to keep in mind is that we have the tangent squared theta. Okay, let me see. If uh, Let's make sure we don't make any mistakes about it. Okay, square root of c secant squared theta, that is dy, and then at the bottom we have the y squared plus c. Okay, that should be good. Now we're going to go ahead and integrate this, but notice that tangent squared theta plus 1 is secant squared. So these two cancel out, leaving us with this, and you can cancel it out if you want or leave it like this, doesn't matter, no big deal. You can also write it like root c times root c, and then cancel out one of these, and that'll be 1 over root c. That's actually what the formula looks like, but this is fine too. Now, we got to integrate what? d theta. How do you integrate d theta? It's just theta. So root c over c times tangent, oops, not tangent. It's just theta, root c over c times theta. And on the right-hand side, we have what? x plus k. Awesome. Now, we got to back substitute theta. What is theta? Theta, I don't know what theta is, but I do know that tangent theta is y over root c. Okay, let's go ahead and write it down. Tangent theta is y over root c. From here, we can safely say that theta is arc tangent of y over square root of c. Okay? So now, if we go ahead and replace it, root c over c multiply by theta, which is arc tangent y over root c equals x plus k. And then from here, you want to solve for y, don't you? Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by root c first. If you multiply by root c here, this is going to become 1, as you know. And then I can go ahead and tan both sides, and that should give me y over root c equals tan root c times x plus k. And I probably need to use another parentheses here, or maybe brackets like this. And I multiply both sides by root c. Finally, you get something like this. And if you want, you can go ahead and distribute the constants. You can even call root c times k another constant. You could also call the square root of c another constant. No big deal. But let's just leave it like this. And go ahead and check out the result from Wolfram Alpha. Let's see if you get something comparable. Okay? And the Wolfram Alpha tells us, ta-da, 
something like this. And do you think they are the same? And this brings us to the end of this video. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.